Hi, everyone. I'm Christine Tully. I'm a senior writing coach at Defend and Publish, and welcome to episode 14, Pandemic Moms and Academic Writing, Part 2, Writing Without Kids. If you didn't catch our episode last week, the focus was on writing with kids when they were pre- when they are present, when you're trying to get some academic writing accomplished. And this week, we're going to focus on those moments when children are not present and you have a reasonably good, decent shot at being uninterrupted at getting some work done. So this could be nap time. It could mean that your children are with a caregiver or at school, but just those hours and possibly only half hours of time that you have open segments. So we're going to focus on four particular particular strategies to use um, during these moments when you don't have children present. So the first one to focus on, and this is one that took me a little while to learn during the pandemic, is to use that open time that's available for scholarly writing. So that seems obvious, but it's really, um, I think it's really difficult to think about writing when you know you still have a stack of papers to grade or you have all those assignments that are due in your course management system or for example you might need to record the next lecture for your class Um, you know there's a lot of other academic tasks that take up a lot of our time and it's it's very tempting to say well i won't have my recording interrupted (laughs) by some screaming children so i should do it now And one of the things that I tried to do during those open moments initially was to knock out my teaching tasks before I got to the writing. And what happens, particularly during a pandemic when everybody's schedule is upended, you may still be homeschooling as I was for a long time. Um, You know, there's just not the, the shots that we had maybe before to get some work done. So I've reversed my thinking on this. And so now um, during the, t- the part of the year where I had children in half day schooling, they were gone. I know I've talked about this before between nine and noon, Monday through Friday. So I used those three hours and it was such a blessing to have them after um, a full on you know, homeschooling during the pandemic. But once things opened up a little bit and they started to go back, I prioritized using those hours for writing. And so the way that I carved them up is I used the nine to 11 portion to do academic writing. And then that last hour I used for anything else like recording class lectures or things that would be better if I didn't have children at home. So it seems like an obvious thing, but I I think a lot of us are very tempted to use that time for other tasks. And quite honestly, some of us just want the extra time to relax or take a shower or, you know, just take a moment to breathe. And I really had to reverse my thinking on it, knowing that I really only have these 15 hours throughout the week that I can be reasonably sure I'm going to have some alone time to work. And so it's, it is a shift in thinking, but um, it it did help immensely because one thing that I found was that it did take a good deal of stress off because I felt like I was still accomplishing my writing. And then no matter what else happened during the day, I could still squeeze in grading a paper here. I could still, you know, take five minutes and look at the course management system or update in an announcement around other things with children. So during the portion that I was homeschooling, for example, one of my daughters would be working on her lessons. She's in fourth grade. And so I could be nearby. I could grade a few papers, answer some questions, grade a few papers, answer some questions. And so that that worked out okay. It wasn't great, but it was definitely better than trying to um, think about, you know, a big overarching research question while she would, where, where I would be interrupted with um, schooling. So that, that's the first strategy. The second thing is related to that, and it is set yourself up before that moment happens. So one, another thing I had to learn during the pandemic was that um, when these open moments opened up, I would spend you know 20 minutes or 30 minutes getting ready to do the writing rather than just jump right in. And part of that was because I had to open up all the documents. I had to get in my email and remind myself about different conversations I was having on various projects. And so now one of the things that I'm doing before I even get to that writing spot is I will take 15 minutes and do everything I need to do to be ready to sit down and write as soon as that open moment happens. So for example, I will open all my documents, like actually open up the tabs so they are on my laptop, ready to go. I will make sure before I even get to work where I do most of my academic writing that I will open up those emails and read those conversations in the morning while children are getting ready and be ready to go once I get there because I've already laid the groundwork. I already know what it is I'm supposed to be doing. 
Um, another thing that I'll do is I, I do keep a checklist and we've talked about this in some of our other webinars and podcasts about um, being prepared and getting things set up for writing where you have a list of your tasks. I will actually look at that and decide what's going to fit best with what I have going on today. What would be the best next step on a project? So that would be another thing that is very, um, very helpful, I think. So setting yourself up and just being ready to go is very, very helpful rather than spending all the time ramping up to do the writing rather than actually doing the writing itself. A third thing that I like to do, and I started doing this when I realized that all time is not created equal, is that I make two lists um, now when I do when I look at my week I will make two lists two lists of writing tasks um, one or, or one side of the list is devoted to projects that take more time and more thinking and I really need you know a bigger chunk of time to accomplish them so for example I'm working on an article right now and I know that the organization is really messy and I need to figure out where different parts go that's going to take me an hour to two hours, possibly even three to figure out what's going on in this article. I want lots of time. I want some whiteboards to map it out. I just know that's not something I can start and stop on a dime. A second thing that I will do then when I'm looking at these smaller tasks is list little things that will move my writing forward, but I cannot come out in 15 or 20 minutes. So some of those little tasks might include things like um, double checking on a reference or just looking at a single paragraph and rewording it for clarity. And why I'm keeping those two lists is that this way I can get even more hours out of my week. I mentioned that I have about 15 that I know for sure are uninterrupted most days. <laughs> and so I'll use those to do the big projects usually. Um, and then the other thing that I will do then with those smaller tasks is if any other open time opens up, I'll worry about working on some of those. So for example, um, sometimes when I pick my daughter up from school, I'm waiting in a long carpool line, but the cars are parked and no one's moving. It's a great time to take, a, take out a laptop or take out a pad of paper and knock out a couple of other things. So that's another way that I'm making use of those other open moments as they appear. Um, this might be great too with moms that have babies or toddlers that are napping at home. I know I lived in constant fear that the baby was going to wake up early or the toddler would wake up early and I couldn't get whatever big thing I was trying to knock out done during that time. So it might be useful to think of just crossing off these 15 to 30 minute projects. So anybody that joined us in our webinar last week, we talked a lot about doing um, 15 or 30 minute tasks because that way you could cross a few off and then if you get interrupted, so be it. You know, that's something that just happens. Um, another thing that you can do, and this is a, a final and a fourth strategy, is that I did commit, and not that I'm a morning person, but I did commit to seeing the sunrise and making sure that I was up early just to grab an extra hour here or there when I was working on um, some projects with deadlines. So not everybody's a morning person, but at least for me, I had a much better shot at getting up and being uninterrupted if it was really early in the morning versus trying to do it after everybody went to bed. Um, if we have any parents of teenagers out there, I, my teenager stays up till midnight. So sometimes she'll still come down and talk to me, which is great, but I'm not, you know, I'm not able to get some focused work done that late at night. Plus by then I'm a zombie. <laughs> so I didn't want to wait um, that long to do it, but I did start committing to getting up at five and then knocking out about an hour to an hour and a half of work. Um, especially during the time where I had no childcare and when um, schools were closed. So if that if that's you, unfortunately, that might be one of the spaces um, to get some writing done without everybody. And you probably know that already. So I'm hoping these strategies are helpful for you to think through how to work um, using those times that you don't have children available. Um, but I wanna point you to a couple of other resources that might be helpful. Um, one of the things that I found is that um, sometimes my energy level, just because I was scrambling doing so many other things, my energy level just wasn't totally there to commit to getting writing done, or I had a million other things on my mind. Um, if you go back and check our podcast episodes, you'll see one in there about making writing an event. You can find those at defendandpublish.com. There's a button for podcasts. We're also on Apple Podcasts now or Spotify. But if you go back and search through the episodes, you can find that one. And in that one, you actually like really work yourself up to go do some writing and you make it fun and something um, that you really want to go do. It's about working through your motivation. And I know for me, sometimes I have to kick those good habits back in. 
And so for example, I talk about getting a really great cup of coffee before I get started. And I know I, I'm, I'm going to have that and then go to my event and drink this really great cup of coffee and work on my, my stuff. Your motivation might be different. For example, you might like, you know, a different playlist to play, or you might like going to a new location that you only go when you do your writing. Um, but just anything to get yourself there, especially when you've got all these other um, parenting tasks going on might be helpful. Um, another thing that I will put in the show notes for today is an article that I talk in inside higher education about resetting your writing agenda. I think a lot of us during the pandemic have to just kind of look at our priorities and decide what, what is happening right now. Um, for many of us, it might be that we're just starting all over again. It's a brand new year. We're just starting all over again. So I talk about how to actually reset your agenda. And that might be the first thing to focus on when you get this alone time to do some writing. So I'm hoping these tips helped. And if you want to find any of our other resources, again, go to defendandpublish.com. You go to podcasts, you can click on that. Um, at the moment, we're also running free webinars. So if you click the webinars tab, you can see we have two left. One is on writing a literature review and another one is on getting your article. So if you've never published an article before or you wanna turn a paper into an article and you just need some strategies, um, they're both totally free. You just need to go to webinars and click the registration button to um, get the information there. So happy writing this week, good luck.